I am back and I have a new microphone. Still the same old camera, but at least I have a microphone. I'm leveling up here, guys. Leave a like and a subscribe. Comment below about my crazy new microphone. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're new here and you don't know what's going on, I'm Ines and I love everything AR and VR related. And today I'm especially excited, as you can tell, because we're gonna talk about augmented reality, machine learning, and some crystals. We're gonna build a custom object classification model for Snapchat for your AR lens with the Field Day AI app. So if you're curious how to use any object you like in a Snapchat lens as a trigger, stay tuned because I'm gonna cover all of that in this video. Let's go. Quick note here, if you already know the machine learning basics, you can skip to the next part. An object classifier is a type of machine learning model that can detect objects and sort them into different categories. To train a machine learning algorithm, we need to show it thousands of examples of what the object looks like. It learns about the objects by memorizing the shape, the color and the texture of the object. Once the model is finished with the training, it can detect the object in new images or videos and put it into a category. The next step from a classifier would be an object detection model. This one can not only identify an object, but also localize it in the picture and draw a little bounding box around it. If we want to go even further, we can train a model that decides for each pixel which category it belongs to and that is called object segmentation. If you want to know more about how machine learning works, I will put some links in the description. Today, we all only want to look at object classifiers and specifically multi-object classification for a Snapchat lens. You can already find a object classifier template from Lens Studio where it detects if you wear glasses or not. There is also a template for multi-object classification, but if you want to detect your own objects like products from a brand or stones in my case, it is actually really hard to create that custom machine learning model. I once spent a whole week trying to figure out how to one, create my own image data set, and then two, train the model so it is actually compatible with Lens Studio. And that's why I was super excited that Field Day reached out to me. They are building an app that makes it super easy to create your own image data set, and it actually also trains the machine learning model for you in the cloud. What is especially exciting to me as a lens creator, they optimized the ONNX format so that it is perfectly compatible with Lens Studio and it works right out of the box. And that's really amazing. They invited me as a beta tester to try out their app. And I was so happy to finally have a user-friendly foolproof tool where I can make my own custom data set. It is super easy to use and you only need a phone for it. So that's why I decided to make this video today because it's honestly amazing how now I can use this incredible complicated technology, at least in my head, <laughs> and just build a fun Snapchat lens with it. For this video, I decided to make a gemstone classifier lens because crystals are aesthetic as fuck. I can teach about different properties that are associated with them. And I can also trigger a magical face lens if it recognizes some of these stones. So in the next chapters, I will walk you through the app, explain how I created a model that can detect six different, six different gemstones and how I used the model in Lens Studio to trigger different effects based on the detected stone. If you want to follow this tutorial, you can use any objects that you have lying around on your desk or if you're working for a brand, just pick some of their products. To collect images for my gemstone database, I went to this beautiful little shop in Berlin-Kreuzberg to pick up some of the most popular gemstones. Just look at all these beautiful stones. It was so hard to decide. But let's get to work. This is how the app looks like when you open it. I already have two test projects in here, but we're just gonna create a new project by clicking on the plus button. Let's rename it to stay organized. If you open up the project, 
The back camera automatically opens and we have to define some categories. I'll start with the amethyst. You can change the color of the label by tapping the little icon on the left. Now that we set up our first label, it's time to scan some amethysts. I made sure to get all of the shapes and forms that the stone comes in, like raw, polished, and I also got some jewelry. Once I felt I had enough images of this one, I did the same thing with rose quartz, citrine, lapis lazuli, the clear crystal and the jade stone. Honestly, it was such a vibe in the store and also my friend told me my future from this little crystal ball, so it was a pretty successful day. Make sure to capture equal amount of pictures for each label, because if you have more images for one category, your machine learning model may become biased towards that one. In the end, we also need some images of backgrounds. By providing example of what's not the object, the model can better distinguish the object from other things in the image. Since I was holding a lot of the stones in my hands, I made sure to capture my hands also as a background. Additionally, I got some floors, boxes and other backgrounds. I took two stones from each category home with me to test my model once the export is finished. The Field Day app automatically uploads your images to a server and trains the model for you. After it is done, they send you a push notification and you can test how well your model works in the app. Jade and Amethyst perform pretty well, but it has difficulties with the citrine, it confuses it a lot with the rock crystal. So all I have to do is go back into the citrine label and record a bunch of new images. And you can tell from the label on the top that it corrects itself automatically. After a few rounds of optimization, the model got pretty confident in what kind of stone is shown in the view and predicts the class correctly. Once you're happy with your model, you can click on the export button on the top and here you can see all the options that you can export your model in. For me, the Lens Studio file is most interesting, so I click that and now Field Day will send me an email with all the necessary files that I need for my lens. If you reached this part of the video, congratulations, you have your own custom machine learning model and you're only a few steps away from creating your Snapchat lens with it. If you liked this video so far, please consider leaving a like, that would really make me feel good, and subscribe for more AR content, but let's continue with the lens. Okay, we successfully created our image database and here's the email that you will get. They provide a documentation, a Lens Studio template file, and this download link is for your actual model. If you look into the documentation, you will find all the necessary information to build your own Snapchat lens. Let's download the Lens Studio template and also our model. After unzipping the folders, you should get a label JS file, your ONNX model and a folder for the Lens Studio template. Let's open this up, update your project if necessary, and here we are. There's already a bunch of stuff in the template that we will look at later. First, let's create a new folder where we can store all of those files that are not necessarily interesting for us right now. Next, I'll drag the ONNX file into the Lens Studio project. Now, this is an important step. We need to set the scale and the bias from the model to the correct value. If we look into the documentation again, we will find the exact values that we need. Now all we have to do is copy and paste the numbers. And that is all we have to do here, the rest is okay, so just press import. Next we drag and drop the labels in here. This is just a JavaScript file with the names of your labels and the color values that you set in the app. 
Now, connecting these is really easy. You have this machine learning component where you drag and drop your model in. And on the label scene object, you place your labels script. And right off the bat, you can see that the labels in the preview change to your categories. Right now, the model needs to be at least 50% sure that this is the detected class to actually give it out to you. So you can change the threshold if your model is not that great, like mine. So now it detects the stones earlier, but might also be more inaccurate. If you have more categories or less, you can change the top K value. And with the little toggle in the preview, you can hide or show the progress bars. You can also change your label names if you made a typo. Also, please tell me if it is rock crystal or clear crystal or clear quartz. I have no idea, but I just stuck with quartz for now. <laughs> now that we're all set, we can start building our lens. Let's deactivate all of this UI like the progress bars and the toggle. I want to show you really quick how you can use this script, multi-class classification, to trigger any event that you want when a certain object is detected. As you can see here, it has a section called use behavior and it gives you a prefix um, like found and lost. And what this does is it sends out a trigger with this found and lost prefix. And on the end here, it attaches the name of the class that got detected. For example, found amethyst or lost amethyst. And we can use that very easily by creating a new script. a behavior script. And here we select on custom trigger. As a trigger name, we just use this one like found. And we attach, for example, the amethyst here. For demonstration purposes, I will just print a message. Let's say Amethyst found. So now whenever it finds an amethyst, it triggers this, this um, print. And you can do all kind of stuff here. And if you're familiar with the behavior script or with the tweens, you already know how to go from here. So for example, if you have an object like a default box, very pretty. <laughs> and you only want to show it whenever the amethyst is found. You can just choose set enabled and put the box in here. So now whenever the amethyst is found, the box appears. Or if you're being fancy, you can call a tween with the tween manager. There you go. And there is a lot what you can do with this already. Just remember that you can use these prefixes to trigger events whenever your object is found or lost. If your model has some problems like minded with the rock crystal and the citrine, the key here is to add even more images to your database and also add more backgrounds into the background class. I also added little things to the background class, like for example, this little thing here, it always said it's a citrine or these things here, because it's green, it said it's a jade, but we want to also add shapes and textures that might be confusing into the background class. If you want to detect your objects also in the face camera, consider adding some people holding your objects into the class. For example, now I would add this as amethyst class, but then I would also add myself holding nothing <laughs> into the background class. 
And finally, this is more a general tip for all AR lenses that you make. Add a call to action. Tell the users what you want them to do. This is always super helpful to guide your audience and help them discover secret features of your lens. And this is already the end of this video. Now you know everything you need to make your own custom machine learning lens. If you want to see my process in depth, how I made the final crystal lens, check out the second part here, where I also explain how to easily reuse some triggers and tweens for every object in your classification model. And once again, thank you so much to Field Day for being the first sponsor of my little channel here. This project has been super fun. They are already working on new features like audio classification, object detection, you remember that one with the box, <laughs> a possibility to import your own image database if you already collected some. And we can also look forward to a synthetic data pipeline, which is a fancy word for saying you can 3D scan your object and it automatically generates all the training data that it needs. So if you're interested in machine learning, definitely check them out. Join the beta or just wait until May where they officially release the app for the iOS store. If you're an Android user like me, we have to wait a little bit longer until end of the year and then it will also be released for the Google Play Store. And that's it for this video. As I said, check out part two here and uh, I see you there. Bye.